Yeah, I have to tell you, I just love watching DeAndre Jordan. He's just so much fun to watch, Will. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, we need to talk about the fouls in basketball because I'm completely irritated because it's ridiculous. I mean, they're taking the emotion out of the game, and I don't understand it. Well, there's a lot of points to this. We've talked about this before, and it's something that people are talking about in the NBA this year because right. of the rule change Yes. that if you go to a referee and you argue about a call that you don't agree with, you get a technical foul. There's and if you no, go like this, There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's the rule they made. The thing is, is emotion, I think, is still allowed. If you direct your emotion toward a referee, you're going to get teed allowed. up. So you have to direct it toward a teammate or... So in, a, in a position where someone's not looking at you, or I don't understand. Well, let, let's take, for example, Blake Griffin. He's yes. somebody we watch a lot. He doesn't get a call a lot. He's a rookie, right. and he's getting banged up down there. He is. He's a very a tough lot. player, but people are being very tough on, on him. him down mm -hmm. low. So he gets angry, and you can see it down low. Yes. He's, he's, but he's not facing a ref. He's not talking to a ref. He's just getting angry, and I think you can have that kind of emotion, but we saw Andrew Bynum the other night at the Lakers-Knicks game. Which was rescinded, I heard, the next day. One technical was rescinded, okay. but he did approach the referee right. and said, are you serious? Yeah. He's are you serious, though? That's not, I mean, it, are you serious that he got thrown out of the game? Questioning, well, as, as we know now, he shouldn't have gotten the second technical. He should not have. But to approach a ref, I mean, I think that's like... You know, I don't think we saw that in the NBA several years ago. No. This started happening, I, I don't know when, just gradually over time, players started to get uh, more aggressive. Air about them, I think, where they thought they could argue a call and make it change. Well, players never changed a call. But don't, the, and don't the coaches argue calls as well? They do, but I think it's something setting a standard for the, the young players that just play the game, you know? You're. you're yeah, You're playing play the, the game. playing the game you love. You you if you foul somebody own up to it. You yeah. foul somebody. And if you want to argue a little bit, don't. Because you're going to get thrown out of the game, which is ridiculous. And I think it's ridiculous. And so does Phil Jackson. You can see how irritated he becomes yeah. when we ask questions about it. He's just like, I, I can't talk about it. He can't know? talk about it. He's been fined a lot, a lot of money <laughs> yeah, he has. for talking about it. Okay, speaking of talking, um, I heard recently that Joe Torre may take a front office position with Major League Baseball, which would be great. We knew that Joe would come back in some capacity, if sure. not managing. I so. think if he wants to work, he'll work. He's going to work in baseball, Absolutely. and I think uh, a, uh, an exact job at uh, MLB would be great for him. It would be great. Of course, he was also offered one in the Dodgers front office, but might not be a very good idea right now. So, hey, Joe, MLB might be the answer for you. Hopefully so. we'll see you in L.A. at some point. Though. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we found out that Orlando Hudson is now a Padre. And I just have to say, one year with Orlando at the Dodgers, greatest guy in the world. So I'm excited we'll be able to see him more. I am too. He'll yep. be in the same division, so He's we'll fun. get to see him several times over the spring and summer. And I like yep. Orlando too. He, he was, was a great. fun, one of the best guys that year he played for the Dodgers. Yeah, he was awesome. He was a fun guy to talk to. You know what, he's one of those locker room guys, too. Like, he's got such a presence about him, and he's so much fun in the locker room, mm -hmm. much like Manny was, you know, and he's not like a quiet guy, so it's, he's a lot of fun to have around. Yeah. All right, now, uh, something else Orlando had some liked very much was pro football, and something we like because it's almost the end of the season, Will, and mm -hmm. uh, we need to make some Super Bowl predictions here. You wouldn't know it's NFL playoff time by the weather. The weather. In January. The, in January, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's warm. We're outside. It's beautiful. But, yeah, the NFL playoffs are going on. It's why we live here, in right? In snow in some places. I know. Can you believe that? And it, just these playoff games have been so crazy. And the fact that the two teams, the Colts and the Saints, played in the Super Bowl last year, and they're gone in a week. In the same day they were gone. That's the nature of football. You know, the Jets are a strong team, and I think uh, it's crazy. I think they might be on a run. The, you know, uh, Rex Ryan is, is, is doing a lot of talking about. Well, he's running his mouth off for yeah. sure, but they're playing the Patriots. And I, you know what? I just don't know if anyone can beat the Patriots. That's the game. I don't think I could make a prediction on that game. No. You're talking about Pittsburgh and Baltimore, um, the other AFC team matchups. And you know what? I, I love the Ravens, but I think that Pittsburgh's a little too strong for the Ravens. You know, Ben Roethlisberger has their number for some reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is, but um, maybe it will come down to the Steelers and the Patriots. It may. Is that your prediction for the uh, for AFC? The AFC championship? I, I think so. I, I think that I ultimately will go on record right now, and I just say that I think the Patriots will win the Super Bowl. Okay. I have picked the Patriots to go to the Super Bowl myself. Okay. I do think there's something to be said for beating the Colts. Okay. 
the Patriots having a bye week and the Jets beating the Col Colts going into this game. Yeah. They have a lot they of momentum, momentum, a lot of fire behind they do. them. Although I'm not going to bet against Tom Brady. That's the problem. So I'm going to take the Patriots going to the Super Bowl for it, the AFC. It doesn't matter who he plays, what receivers he has. He's just on. It's almost like it's his time or something, you know. I, I mean, for the NFC, the Falcons look very good, but can they beat the Patriots? Is the NFC even strong enough? I uh, I think the Falcons are a quiet team. We don't hear much about them. We don't. Them. We barely um, ever see them on television. Yeah, I mean, unless you get the NFL ticket. Right. I don't think a lot of people know who... You know, they're starters. Right. Just name a handful of starters, but they, they had a they're very good. fourteen and two record. They did. Unlike the seven and nine record that Seattle went in beating the Super Bowl champion Saints. What mm -hmm. was that? I they must have had some trouble this year. They obviously did, but when it mattered, they got their playoff spot. They beat the St. Louis Rams to sneak in with a losing record. And then they beat the uh, world champion. That was New Orleans Saints. That was craziness, you know. And when you think about, you think about the Tom Brady's, the the Drew Breeses, you know, Hasselback is a great quarterback, but he doesn't get the same kind of attention. And but can he go to the next level? The next level. That's the question. Tom Brady, we know, can do that. You know, so yeah. I, I don't know. Ben Roethlisberger, we know he can do that. Yeah, well, that's yet to be proven. I mean, right. they're going to play the Chicago Bears. Yes. This coming Sunday. Yeah, we also gonna, have we're, the we're, Packers in the mix. Yeah. So I, this is going to be, I think this is going to be the toughest games this weekend that we've seen all year. Uh, even more, maybe even more than the Super Bowl game. Who's your pick, Falcons or Packers? I, you know what, I have to go with the, I think I have to go with the Falcons. I think okay. I have to go with the Falcons. What about you? I think I'm going to go with uh, Aaron Rodgers. Ooh. I think I think he's feeling it this year. Maybe a lot of people are saying that about him. This is I think I, I think just like uh, maybe the Jets. I feel the same way about mm -hmm. the, they're they're hitting their stride at the right time. I, you know what? I I will stand right now and say if the Jets do by some act of God beat the Patriots, I will root for the Jets all the way to the Super Bowl. <laughs> That will be the most amazing thing I've ever seen. You think Sanchez will do the uh, the, the the Joe Namath prediction? And I hope not. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he, <laughs> he should. He needs to just not say anything and just just play football. No, a lot of USC fans will make a prediction for him, but hopefully, yeah. if but, he gets that far. But USC fans are they going to root for like you know Mark Sanchez or Pete Carroll? What what a Super Bowl that'd be! Oh Seahawks my gosh. and Jets. Could you could you imagine? Southern That'd California wants Seahawks Jets, I have a feeling. Yeah, I don't think I could handle that, but <laughs> you mean, go Patriots. I don't think yeah. I could handle that. That might be just a little too much for me. So what's our pick? I think I'm going to say Patriots versus the Packers. I think that's, okay, so you're going to say that for the Patriots Packers, and I'm going to say Patriots Falcons. Okay. All right, so we'll see who's right, because clearly one of us will be wrong. So. <laughs> and then we'll have to have... We'll have a to winner have... for that, a prediction for that. Yeah, game. yeah, for sure. Well, Maria, your favorite time of year is just approaching pitchers and catchers report. Less for than training. one month. Of spring training is going to be so much fun. Actually, I had a chance here at Trump National to sit down with a, a local school teacher mm -hmm. who was in the minor league system for 15 years. Great right. guy. Let's take a look and meet Ira Smith.